Hello there. The level of theft of meat, confectionery, and alcohol has hit a ten-year high. More bad news for this increasingly lost and mired Tory government. They can no longer be trusted with the economy, nor our defence, or our borders. And now we find out they're also weak on crime. According to the Association of Convenience Stores, the ACS, an estimated 1.1 million incidents of theft took place last year. That's an increase of over 13% on the previous year. And it's a 10-year high, and someone has to pay the cost of that crime. And that someone is obviously the rest of us, through higher prices in the shops to offset the money lost through shoplifting. And when shopkeepers are forced to install anti-crime equipment and hire some sort of security, that cost gets passed on too. It's not rocket science. And if they do hire a security guard or two, what could they do other than keep their eyes open? Because under our social services-led legal system, any security guard that does anything to intervene with a case of shoplifting or tries to detain a shoplifter could be the one ending up with a lengthy prison sentence while the shoplifter gets a slap on the wrist. Anyway, as theft increases, so do prices. A theft-induced inflationary pressure. Possibly, or even probably, leading to even more theft. And when shopkeepers do report it to the police, they are often ignored because the value of items stolen isn't enough to trigger an investigation. Or so I'm told. How does that incentivise the reporting of crime? It doesn't. I wonder how many retailers have given up reporting these crimes. Ignoring these crimes has only one outcome. It encourages it. And here are some of the worrying findings from the latest crime report from the Association of Convenience Stores. 63% of shop theft is committed by repeat offenders. 79% of retailers believe that the cost of living crisis has led to an increase in theft. 87% of colleagues working in convenience stores have experienced verbal abuse over the last year. Retailers estimate that just 16% of crimes against their business are reported to the police. £228 million was invested by convenience retailers in crime prevention measures over the last year. And this is just the convenience stores, remember. Well, over half of these crimes are committed by repeat offenders. And I would guess that in most instances, these repeat offenders get reported to the police. But obviously nothing happens about it. Zilch. Nada. The chief exec of the ACS, James Lohman, called the level of theft unprecedented and said, Repeat offenders, known to the community and known to the police, are stealing without fear of reproach. Without fear of reproach. Seems like they can just walk in, take what they want and then leave without being stopped knowing no one will do anything about it. It's like it's become a sort of wealth redistribution programme, so that those who pay for their goods are effectively passing on a large percentage to those that don't pay. But many of those that do pay are already hurting financially themselves, but they still pay. While many of those that do thieve from stores are not doing so to put food on their family's table. No, a lot of it is down to feeding their illicit substance habits. The most commonly stolen items, as reported by retailers, are meat, alcohol and confectionery. Typically high-value items that can then be sold on by those with a drug or alcohol addiction or part of wider organised crime groups, says the ACS. Now, if this is repeated across other stores and supermarkets, it might explain some of the inflation we're seeing.
Now, the ACS wants government and police support to help local businesses. But the thing is, the government has put laws in place, but it seems that the police are not even doing the minimum of looking into these crimes in the first place. This is the sort of thing that a local Bobby on the beat might just help with, don't you think? Anyway, the ACS wants to see the creation of a most wanted list of shop thieves for each police area so that prolific offenders can be banned from shops or referred for rehab. It also wants a review of the impact on crime of the new law, making it an aggravated offence to attack a public-facing shop worker. The ACS also wants to see investment in rehab programmes to break the cycle of offending and ineffective punishment, as well as more use of the community trigger and community remedy tools so that local businesses get a say in how their problems are dealt with and then dealing with offenders without using the courts. They also want investment in crime prevention measures incentivised. Now here's an idea. What if the whole country paid some sort of local levy as part of their council taxes to set up a body of people whose job it is to investigate these crimes and bring the perpetrators to book? Oh wait, yes, we already do have a police force, or should I say, service. But it seems they are not incentivized to look into these low-level matters, despite them presumably being quite low-hanging fruit for them to easily gather in criminal terms? Or is the acceptance of a certain level of this seen as a way of reducing the instances of house burglaries, for example? I.e., if theft is going to happen, it might as well be in shops instead of in homes. But that would be a far too cynical, unofficial policy to follow, wouldn't it? Now, apart from fueling inflation, ignoring these low-level crimes is also fueling the criminal trade of dealing in illicit substances. It also risks the livelihoods of local businesses who can't keep asking their customers to pay the price of local crimes through their shopping bills. And if some of these stores are forced to close down, there will be many local people who will suffer because they rely on their local shops. Shoplifting is not a victimless crime, as some would have you believe. And judging by the numbers, this is not a small one-off event that happens now and again. It looks like a major crime spree to me, a crime spree that's been allowed to get out of control and a crime spree that's probably costing the rest of us billions through our shopping bills. The chief exec of the ACS is right when he says, Official crime figures barely scratch the surface of the problems that retailers are facing. The government, police and crime commissioners and local forces need to take urgent action to stop this national crime wave in its tracks and send a clear message that repeat offenders will be dealt with properly. And then the police have to be ready for the next target the criminals come up with to cause us all misery. But we've become so weak on crime in the UK, I do have to wonder if an altercation with the legal system bothers many of these offenders very much these days. <laughs>